Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my weekly wrap up of November 8th, 2015. Though you may notice that I'm probably in higher quality, higher definition video than I usually am, which is making me a little bit self-conscious about how I look for the first time because I did my test videos and I was like, oh my god, you can see every single one of my skin blemishes. There's something to be said for a low quality video that hides the imperfections somewhat. Uh, so I gotta get used to seeing myself like this. If you don't know, my, my HD webcam broke finally. I was messing up all my videos. I was getting really frustrated. So I broke down and I bought a Canon EOS Rebel T5i camera. Of course, now I have to start learning how to use the camera properly. That's my problem. I love sexy new electronics, but I don't learn how to use them to the, to the fullest extent. So after I get done filming this, I'll be headed over to see my dad, who knows a lot more about cameras. <laughs> I read five books this past week, three of them are rereads, and those books that I reread were the Harper Hall trilogy by Anne McCaffrey, Dragon Song, Dragon Singer, and Dragon Drums. I'm not going to talk about these today other than to say that I absolutely love them uh, for after rereading them for the millionth time, and I'm going to do a separate overview of this trilogy. I hope I can keep my momentum up and reread some of the other big ones in the series like the first book, Dragon Flight and the White Dragon and maybe the Master Harper of Pern. I, I'll have to look and see which ones. There are a lot of events mentioned in these three books, background details and history and stuff that relate to the other books and it just has reignited my desire to reread these books since some of them I've never reread, like The White Dragon. That's the thing I've learned about rereading books this past year, something I've never really pushed myself to do until this year. It's just that reading books again as an adult, it's so fascinating to see how you pick up on new things or how you think completely different about a lot of things that happen. It's just, that's really cool, so gonna have to reread more of Anne McCaffrey's work. I read two other books this week. Uh, the first one, the first thing that I actually finished this week was the audiobook of Surface Detail by Ian M. Banks. This is the ninth out of ten in publication order in the Culture series, and I've heard a lot of people say you can read these books in pretty much whatever order you want to because they are not really sequential. I did not realize that surface detail seems to be the one book in the series that everyone is like, do not read this first. Read the other ones first because it really makes a lot more sense and has more impact when you know a lot more about the culture. The basic story is that a woman named Ledeja Ibrek uh, on a planet called Sichult is an intagliat. Um, her people have this thing where if, if like one family defeats another family, the conquered people are like tattooed and uh, very intricately as a sign of this and become kind of the possessions of the other family and they are intagliats for multiple generations. They actually become tattooed at birth when they have children. Their children are like in the womb genetically changed to have tattoos not just on their skin but on their organs inside. It's like turning them into possessions that are pieces of artwork Ledeja is the possession of a, the most powerful, richest man on the planet who is an awful, awful person and at the beginning of the story he kills her. She's trying to run away again. He kills her. She is resurrected on board a culture ship. This should not have happened because this planet Sichel doesn't have much to do with the culture. So it's kind of a mystery, but she, she is alive now. She's got a new body, and of course she decides to go and kill Vepers, the man who killed her, because vengeance. But he is the most powerful man in Sichult, and he also has a lot of sway, a lot of political power, is very important in the virtual hells of this world. 
a whole bunch of people's planets have their own personal hells. Vepers has controlling interest in the hells and there is a war being fought over whether the hells should continue to exist or not. The culture is on the side of those who say it, they should not, that's a bad thing, you shouldn't do that, but it seems that they're going to lose. So there are a bunch of storylines, a bunch of characters other than Ledeja, a lot of other perspectives in the story, and they all eventually converge on Sigilt about Vepers and the Virtual Hells. And I had a hard time keeping track of a lot of what was going on. I really liked Ledeja's perspective. I thought it was just really cool, really entertaining to follow her as she's resurrected and is suddenly pushed into the culture and has to learn a lot of things. Her interactions with a lot of the culture ships were just hilarious sometimes. It just didn't gel very well for me and I don't know why, honestly. I'm, I'm thinking that the culture novels just might work a lot better for me in print form instead of, you know, racing through them on audiobook while my mind is usually on a jigsaw puzzle as well or, you know, driving or something. Uh, the final book that I read this week, which was actually the second book that I read, what am I talking about, was The Fall of the Kings by Ellen Kushner and Delia Sherman. This is the third book in the Riverside series in chronological order. It's actually the second book in publication order. I think it was written before The Privilege of the Sword. If you're curious about the Riverside series in general and Ellen Kushner's work, then I will send you to Victoria's channel. She did an overview video. She's read all of Ellen Kushner's work and has stuff to say about that. And I'm reading these books on her recommendation anyway. The Fall of the Kings takes place about 60 years after the first book in the series called Swords Point, and there's a completely new cast of characters. A professor at the university, a, the, a, a doctor of like, ancient history named Basil St. Cloud is investigating what really happened to the kings of the land. Um, the northern and southern halves of the kingdom used to be separate. They were brought together and there's this entanglement between the ancient kings and their wizards. Um, like the kings used to take the wizards as their lovers and lots of rituals involving sex and blood and sacrifice and stuff like that, all to give the king power, I think. And most people take this as myth. Um, the kings were deposed, they were said to have gone mad, and they've been ruled by like the council of lords ever since then. It's a bit treasonous for Basil to imply that the kings were actually not that bad and maybe shouldn't have been deposed and that, hey, the wizards might actually have really had magical powers. Um, and as, as Basil is investigating this, as he is lecturing on it, a young man, a, the future Duke Tremontaine, is also at the university and they start this passionate love affair and you might be able to guess the man investigating wizardly powers starts having sex with the man who is descended from the ancient kings and then it all happens again in the modern day. The thing that I love the most about this book is the setting, the feel, just this, the tone of this type of fantasy. I really enjoy it. I love the setting of Riverside. I love the city. I love a lot of the, the, the characters. Just the, the feel of the society really appeals to me. This book is way steamier, way heavier on the, the love scenes than the previous books in the series, which if that's your jam, that's cool. I didn't dislike it. It's just started to feel a little bit oppressive by the end of the story. I was really glad for the introduction of Jessica. I was glad she came in and kind of took a little bit of the focus off of these men's intense love affair. So that was pretty good. And I did not expect that ending. Like, what? Can we get another book? It was a really good reading week in retrospect. I really enjoyed, like, massively enjoyed four of the five things that I read this past week. Uh, if you want to know what I'm currently reading, go see my Friday Reads video. It hasn't changed that much since I filmed on Friday. I need to read the last 200 pages of The Fox by Sherwood Smith today because it's due at the library tomorrow. So yeah, that's it for me and hope you guys are having a great weekend. 
I'll be back again once I figured out some more of my camera with finally my short fiction favorites of October and my overview of the Harper Hall trilogy. And until then, bye.